now to uh, regional to continental scale hydrological modeling and forecasting in South America. Um, and I'm really glad to have here Walter Collison from the Universidade Federal do Rio Grande do Sul. I hope I pronounced it correctly. So uh, Walter, the, the floor is yours and please uh, keep the 15 minutes. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Peter. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Please confirm. Okay. I will talk uh, about our efforts in South America in uh, the Universidade Federal do Rio Grande do Sul, which is located in Brazil. In terms of developing uh, uh, capability of continental scale hydrological modeling and uh, flood forecasting. So um, we are located here in Porto Alegre, which is in, in Brazil, in Southern Brazil. And I lead a research group there at the university, which is uh, focused on large scale hydrology. And our study area is uh, the whole uh, continent, South America. We are the last 10 to 15 years, we are trying to, to have modeling tools and forecasting tools uh, at the continental scale. And what I will show today is how we are developing these tools and uh, some of the results we, we are getting uh, in these experiments. Uh, South America, as any other large uh, region, has needs for continental or global forecasts uh, in terms of floods. Uh, we have large uh, transboundary river basins and uh, where rainfall at one country may trigger a flood in another. Uh, for instance, this is the case in, in the uh, Madeira River Basin, which is located in the Amazon. The Madeira is the sixth largest uh, river in the world in terms of discharge. And most of this discharge is uh, generated along the Andes in this region here to the southwest uh, in Peru and Bolivia. And in 2014, we had a big flood there, a record flood, where the region around uh, Porto Velho here in, in Brazil was flooded due to this uh, uh, rainfall occurring in, in neighboring countries uh, from Brazil. And uh, due to uh, difficulties in sharing information between this, those countries, uh, those floods have been uh, not really well uh, forecast by, by authorities <clears throat> and leading to several difficulties in, in, in Brazil. But the same occurs in other uh, river basins in, 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 in South America, which are shared by more than one country, as the case of the Orinoco River Basin here between Colombia and Venezuela, and in the case of the La Plata, Paraná River Basin, which is shared by Brazil, Paraguay, Bolivia, Argentina, and Uruguay. Uh, where in this case, a rainfall occurring in, mostly in Brazil may trigger floods in, in other countries like Paraguay and, and Argentina and Uruguay. As was the case in 92, for instance, where the flood plain Paraná River Basin which look like like these in a dry year was uh, inundated fully uh, in uh, width to five uh, fifty kilometers wide <clears throat> in the region of Santa Fe. But uh, not only floods uh, are motivating our our studies but also other kinds of streamflow forecasts are, are needed uh, due to the uh, large interconnected uh, power system, power grid. Uh, decisions relating to uh, water use in hydropower plants uh, have to be taken in terms of uh, what is predicted in different uh, basins at the same time, uh, because most of uh, Electric power in South America is produced by hydropower, and therefore a decision uh, depends on the forecast. 
not only for floods, but during normal uh, times too. <clears throat> and finally, there is a need to uh, understand uh, continental hydrology because uh, the scale of climatic processes is most of the time very large. An uh, interesting example of this is from the year 83, 1983, where we had several floods in different parts of uh, Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina, for instance, but in different times of the year. So we had uh, record floods in February in central Brazil, then uh, record floods in June in southern Brazil and uh, record floods in July in the region between Uruguay and Argentina. Uh, those floods could be understood as uh, independent uh, events at a local and regional scale. But if uh, we study those floods in the continental scale, we understand those more as a, a the same same big event uh, and the different events are related to one to, the, to another. <clears throat> Despite these needs to, to have continent, continental forecasts in South America, we, uh, in most uh, situations, we have just uh, local or regional uh, operational flood forecast systems. This is the case, for instance, for Brazil, where this picture shows where the operating uh, flood forecasting systems are located. Mostly those uh, systems are based on uh, local information and on flood propagation only. So also the, the uh, forecasting uh, lead time is limited due to this uh, methodology. We understand that uh, continental scale forecast may support those uh, local or regional systems, uh, giving a, a whole picture of the continent and at the same time, maybe uh, larger lead times for forecasts. So therefore, we, we are the last uh, uh, 15 years, perhaps, we are trying to improve our understanding of the physical processes that are relevant in those uh, big rivers and large uh, river basins. Uh, this includes the, the dynamics of floodplains in places such as the Amazon, the hydrodynamics itself, and uh, related to backwater effects, for instance, the effects of reservoirs and even headwater wetlands. <clears throat> and we, we try to address that, improving uh, our tool, our hydrological modeling tool with hydrodynamic capabilities and by a more uh, a coupled simulation between the hydrological vertical processes and the river routing and flood routing. Uh, an interesting observation we made during this time is that uh, floodplains are not uh, limited to very large rivers like the Amazon or the Amazon tributaries or the Paraná. We can find floodplains at very small rivers in comparison to these uh, big rivers, even rivers that are whose basin is just a uh, few uh, thousand square kilometers wide. And if we include this representation of those floodplains in our model, we always improve our, our simulations and our uh, flood forecasting capabilities. So we observe that floodplains are everywhere in, in, in South America, at least. And it's important to uh, represent those floodplains in the, the model to improve the results. Another challenge we have in many parts of South America is to deal with uh, low data availability. This is, for instance, the Tocantins River Basin, uh, 
which is around uh, 700,000 square kilometers uh, wide. And where for operational forecasts, we have a very limited number of rain gauges. You can see them here. Uh, but we could improve those by using real time uh, satellite uh, policy mates, which are not perfect, but maybe by blending those with, <clears throat> with the information we have at the ground, we could improve our forecast in, in those uh, river basins. So uh, we, a lot of what we do is to use remote sensing data uh, to improve our modeling and forecasting capabilities. And uh, more or less 15 years ago, we started to use uh, quantitative precipitation forecasts to uh, have flood forecasts. At that time, the challenge was to show that uh, those quantitative precipitation forecasts could be used operational, operationally in flood forecasting, uh, and that we could get improved results in comparison to the traditional methods that were used then. Uh, and this effort was successful, and, and we showed uh, several times that we could improve uh, our, our forecast, even by using just a, a normal um, uh, deterministic forecast. And the last 10 years, we, we moved to ensemble forecasting and we made tests uh, in several river basins all over uh, South America. And as in other places, uh, ensemble forecasting outperformed deterministic forecasts and we could improve our, our flawed forecasting capabilities. And we have also shown differences between some of the regions and difference, difference between the source of the uh, quantitative precipitation forecast. For, uh, for instance, between the different modeling systems uh, in, in tropical regions. Uh, in the last few years, we also uh, try to improve our, our data simulation capabilities. And this is just uh, going on. I will not enter the details now in, in this. And we, we finally, in the last five years, we were able to develop a continental uh, hydrological model for, for the whole South American continent. This is a model based on a, on a uh, MGB hydrological model, which we develop, developed it in, in Brazil. It uses uh, MSWEP precipitation data, which is mainly based on, on uh, satellite information. Uh, we divided the whole continent in uh, catchments, which are, uh, which are around uh, 500 uh, square kilometers wide. The discretization method we use is based on, on uh, dividing the, the uh, drainage network in 15 kilometer river ridges. We, we divide the river network in, in constant uh, distance uh, reaches around uh, 15 kilometers. And this model was verified, again, observed data in, in different uh, regions. And also uh, we compared uh, the model results with terrestrial water storage by GRACE and water levels and we're having good results in most of the, the places. One minute, uh, Walter, please. Oh, okay. So uh, we then moved to flood forecasting, and we, we had results of continental flood forecasting with this continental model. What we have shown then is that we can have a moderate to high flow forecasts uh, that can be skillful. Uh, up to 15 days in advance in, in South America. The skill is larger in the eastern part of South America and lower in the western part of South America, which may be related to a, a difference between what is forecast and what is uh, our observation in this mountainous region here along the Andes. <clears throat> 
as is shown here by this bias, the difference between observed by MSWEP and uh, predicted by ASMWF. Uh, more recently, we, we tried with ensemble model output statistics for post-processing those uh, continental forecasts. Uh, and we had uh, success in, in this post-processing. We improved our forecast from the raw uh, forecast to post-processed uh, forecast, as you can see here, in most of the places, except uh, along the very slow uh, responding rivers like the Amazon and the Paraguay, which shows that uh, data simulation is uh, necessary. So those are some examples of, of fraud forecasts uh, we, we had. And uh, what we are doing now is to implement continental scale uh, data simulation for the continental model and comparing flooded uh, areas that are estimated by the model what, what, by what can be uh, observed by satellite images. And we are also trying with sub-seasonal and seasonal forecasts in, uh, in Brazil using the continental scale hydrological model. Uh, operational version of the model can be checked uh, at this uh, site. Uh, we have this South American river discharge monitor, which shows simulated uh, river discharges at uh, daily uh, time steps and is updated daily. This picture shows, for instance, what happened uh, this year with where we had a flood, a record flood in the Amazon at the same time as a record drought in, in southeastern uh, South America. So that is it. Uh, thank you for your attention.